So the last part here in the inverse kinematics is the really fun part where we get to figure out the yaw pitch and roll of the spherical wrist as it's I told you earlier um, in the math we decouple the wrist um, from the robot so we take these three joints we pull them off we do the math against it make a frame for that rotation and then we stick it back on to the end of the robot um, so um, one of the first things that we need to um, understand is that where we stick this wrist back onto the robot that's going to be considered the the end of J3 as you know, we've got three joints and so what we need to do is find out what the frame is for J3 more or less um, for where the robots at in our inverse kinematic equation we figure out where J3 is for that frame because that frame is going to affect our yaw pitch and roll here in our wrist. You know, if I set my yaw pitch and roll to a particular value and then slapped it onto the robot when the robot was at a nice perfect 90 degrees, then it would probably be correct. But if I jogged my robot, you know, way over to some weird angle and then I slapped my wrist onto it, you know, I've got I've got the orientation of, you know, where the first three joints puts it and then mechanically where that bolts onto it and then I've got that one. So basically for the yaw pitch and roll of the wrist I have to figure out the angle of this frame, the angle of the wrist, and then I have to multiply those two together to get the overall rotation of the wrist relative to the world and then from that I have to extract the joint angles out of that frame. So we'll step through this little piece at a time. Another tidbit here is that um, when we slap the, the wrist back onto J3 here, um, this frame uh, actually has to be inverted. So, you know, think of it as, you know, we have to, to this frame, um, if we were to, uh, you know, imagine that, uh, get out of here. If, if, uh, take that arrow out of there. Come on. There we go. So if we imagine that this yellow line is the, uh, you know, it's kind of the face of the frame that we have to, the face of the frame that we have to stick that wrist to it, um, this frame, you know, depending on where it's pointed, what angle it's at, we have to invert it. We have to invert this um, frame so that it's correct. Otherwise, it'll it'll be reversed. Um, and that's kind of one of the more difficult parts is um, inverting rotational matrices is not a lot of fun. So that's what we're going to get into here is how to first calculate this frame, how to invert this frame, then how to calculate all these angles, and then how to stick the the wrist back onto that frame. Um, giving us, you know, the the new rotation of both of them together, giving us the actual rotation of the wrist, and then from that we'll extract the values for joints 4, 5, and 6. So I know that's confusing. Um, I apologize. Uh, hope that makes sense. So let's look at it on the spreadsheet. So what we're going to do to get um, the rotational uh, matrix for uh, joint three is we're going to do the exact same thing we did at the beginning of the Ford kinematic program. We're going to get the Denovit Hardenberg parameters for joints one, two, and three. We're going to apply those to frame for joint one, a, transform a transformation frame for joint two, and a transformation frame for joint three. And you notice I didn't go any further, so that's all I needed. So I basically copied and pasted everything I did from the forward kinematic equation into the inverse equation. And then I again multiplied my my uh, zero transformation fictitious work frame that I'm playing with times that frame, and then I took the product of that and multiplied it times this frame, and then I took the product of that and multiplied it by this frame, giving me my transformation matrix for where J3 is for basically where I'm going to reconnect my wrist mathematically. Um, so. 
that being said, out of this transformation matrix, the only thing I need is this purple box. I only need the rotation. I don't care about the position right now. So all I need is this. So now I get to invert it. Um, and that's the fun part. So over here in this purple box, this is um, all of these equations are to invert um, that matrix. So I put up a link here to a video. Sal Khan does an awesome job of explaining it, probably better than anybody else. So if you want to watch his, if you want to pause the video right now and go watch his thing on it, uh, that'll probably explain it better. Um, but basically, we have to come up with what's called the matrix of minors. So I come up with a 4x4 four four box for every one box on my uh, rotation matrix. So you know, I've got a box of four here for that one, a box of four here for that one, and so on. And then um, basically um, how this works, if I can remember how it works, um, you basically, um, for this box up here, you, um, if we're dealing with the top left corner box, then we take this top left corner box and we mark that row and we forget about it and then we mark that row and we forget about it and then we take these four values and stick them right there so you can see those four values are right there okay so then I will clear that out now for this box here you take and you cross out this row and then you cross out this row and then this box contains these two values and these two values in a box okay and then this is again this is just some math trickery that somebody figured out on how to do this um, for this box up here since it represents this box we would cross out this row and we would cross out this column and then in this box would contain these four values in that box right there and so we keep doing that all the way through so I'll do one more example take the fill out here um, so let's say the we wanted to do this middle box here so we take this middle box and we cross out the middle row and we cross out the middle column and then this middle box is the remaining four squares. This one, this one, this one, and this one. So you keep doing that for, for every box all the way through. And what you end up with is a much larger matrix called the matrix of minors. Now the next thing we need to do is take this matrix of minors and create a matrix of minors determinant. So this matrix is formulated from this matrix. Um, to get this matrix, we basically multiply, um, it, it's matching again, this box, these four values are used to get that one, these four values are used to get that one, and so on, those four values for that one, the four in the middle for that one, and basically all you do is top left times bottom right minus bottom left times top right. You can see that formula here. And so you just do that formula for every single box and put that value right here in your matrix of minors uh, matrix right there. Now the next thing we have here is the matrix of cofactors. This guy here is just uh, every other static. You know, this one isn't calculated on anything else. It's just one, negative one, positive one, negative one, positive one, negative one, positive one, negative one, positive one. So we're just flip-flopping our operator on every one of those and then we take and to get uh, the matrix of cofactors we multiply the first box times the first box goes there second times the second third times the third so we're basically just inverting the sign every other box to get um, that one right there so then um, so stepping back this one right here um, so this is the matrix of cofactors and that's actually just this one here is is called the adjugate uh, and I just transferred it from here down to here so if we uh, I just did that to keep everything kind of in a line here but 
if we look at that one, that just equals that value. Um, this one equals that value. Um, so I, I saw, I'm sorry, I misspoke there. It's not a direct translation of it. You, you kind of flip-flop it. So the adjugate is a flip-flop version of this one. So, um, you know, that, that one's the first box, but then that one goes down and that one goes, so you're basically just rotating it. A um, little more math trickery to get to where we need to go here. So you can see how it's just rotating, you know, it's just rotating this, um, matrix of cofactors over into this makes the, the adjugate. The next thing we need to know is the determinant. Um, the determinant is calculated uh, basically by um, a similar method to how we multiply uh, matrices together except for in this case we're just multiplying the top row of, um, of this uh, cofactors matrix times the top row of what we started out with. Um, and when you multiply that all together, you come out with a number one. And um, no matter which wrist orientation I've ever had it in, I've never had anything other than one. But I suppose this math needs to be done in case, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, so then we have where we actually get the inverse of this. So we go through all this crap, doing this matrix of minors, matrix of minors determinant, and all this. and when we're done here, we basically just take the adjugate times the determinant, and that gives us our inverse. So basically, in this case, our inverse is the same as the adjugate. Um, I would highly recommend watching his video. He explains it better than I do. Um, and then the the proof here um, is that the, the proof is that if you were to multiply what you started with times its inverse you should end up with the um, with the zero transformation matrix which we talked about earlier in one of the earlier videos the the matrix of zero transformation and so let's take a look and see um, where we're actually at here um, the robot so if I put so right now I'm at 90 180 175 um, Let's see here. Let's try this. If I go zero, zero, and zero, I should end up with. Oh, I need to get these as close to zero as I can get to. So let's do point zero zero one since that doesn't like actual zero. Two can be zero. Three needs to be the same point zero zero. zero. Okay, so now. We're as close to zero on the robot as we can. We've got 90 uh, degrees all the way across, so each of our uh, rotations are at 90. Um, our change in, we haven't made any changes. Our output um, for the joints, um, you can see when we do all zeros, um, this is where we run into singularity, because you see now I'm out by 180 on both of those. But let's see what it does to our So once those are all zeroed out, um, you know, you can see, well, no matter what I do, um, but I just did that to get rid of all of the, the, the other values there. But you can see that um, when we multiply those together, um, we're going to end up with, we should always end up with the zero transformation matrix. Um, so even after, let's say that I, I change that to 20, 50, just throw in some values there, I should still end up with, no matter what angle J3 is at, once I multiply it by its inverse, I should still end up with the zero transformation matrix. So this right here, we don't really need it. I just did it to show the proof um, that it worked. So I would, again, I'd highly recommend watching his video since I'm an idiot. Um,